Hey, what's up? This is Jake and we're in the shop here. Um, it's been a long three week road, four week road. I've, I haven't posted any videos. Um, I, I did shoot a ton of video. I just haven't edited a bunch of it and here we are. Car still doesn't have paint on it. Really thought it would have paint on it by now. It's been a long, long road, um, but we'll get into the video. We'll show you what where we're at so far and then I'll do kind of a little bit of wrap up at the end and go on to the next step. Hey, what's up? This is Jake here in Jake's shop. Time for another update on this car. I'm going to get ready to shoot some paint on this car. I've got some masking to do. Um, I've also got some other key little features that I'm going to do before I get ready to actually shoot paint. So we'll do another update on the car and uh, we'll take it from there. Hey, if you like this video at all, hit like and subscribe. Thanks. Okay, so as you can see, the part of this car is gray. Guide coat there, still more guide coat to happen on that door. But the rest of the car is this opaque kind of light, I don't know, cream color. And you can see I've started to kind of block it down. Now this cream color uh, is what the car came in. Someone had sandblasted it before I got it and they shot it with some sort of primer, which is good, you know, it's, it's protected it and it's really easy to sand off. You can see I've started to block the car. You can see a little bit of mud in there. It's pretty thin. I've uh, actually put my hand behind those panels and it's not bad. Some of the next steps on the car right now is I'm just gonna block this thing out to sand the primer down pretty well. You can see I'm just lightly blocking the, the, the top of the car. I'm not pushing very hard, um, you know, going in, two different directions. And just slowly taking my time, block block it all down. Um, there's not a whole lot of anything that's really worrisome on the panels on this car, they, um, at least some of the existing stuff they've done. It hasn't been bad, you know, it's been uh, properly stripped all the way down to bare metal and someone's uh, taken the time to at least do a little bit of body work to it. So we'll take it down and we'll inspect some of that body work. Couple things about this car. Usually there's a body seam in here. Now they filled in this body seam. I don't know what they use to fill in the body seam. My worry is that it's just regular filler, which I'd rather not use. You know, there's a, a lot of arguments out there whether you should use uh, Duraglass or all metal type product. I'm probably gonna end up digging this out and go ahead and fill it with Duraglass and then block it back down and, and do that type of work before I do my next primer coat. I'm going to block all of this lighter color primer down kind of like I've done on the other side, and I'm going to go ahead and reprime it. Another thing I'm going to do while I have the opportunity here is go ahead and run a ground wire. Now this is just a standard copper wire, nothing special there. I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the chassis of the car, and I've actually run it outside my shop, and I've stuck it in the ground. Um, I'm doing this, uh, maybe it's overkill, maybe it's ridiculous, but I just like the idea of no static building up on the car. You know, a lot of guys will talk about static electricity building up on the cars, and if you build up static on the car, uh, dust will want to cling to it. So, I don't know, cheap insurance, right? Not like I've painted a bunch of these to really know the difference, but I'm, that's what I'm told, so I'm going to do it. It's easy. Little overspray from my jams <laughs> that I've got on there. All this, again, all this will be blocked down. Um, so my next step in this car is really just to mask it off a little bit better. Finished masking around the door jams and the trunk and the hood jams. I'm going to mask inside the wheel wells here, up inside here, and all the way around. And I'm going to run it all the way to the floor and tape it off to the floor. That way. Dust won't get under my undercarriage, dust won't build up under the car, and it'll be one less thing to worry about. You know, a lot of times when you're, you know, you're going through and you're spraying the car down, there's a lot of overspray going up under the car. It's whippling air up under the car and dust as well. So um, that will be one more uh, effort to try and keep dust and everything down to a minimum. You know, this is actually just going to be a primer coat after I mask it, do my primer coat, do all my blocking, do more sanding, finish getting all the panel alignments done. There's a couple little areas of body work that I still need to attend to on this car. This wheel well you can see is all back masked off and I've started to attach a plastic to it. Um, the plastic's not trimmed, right? Um, this is really actually good plastic. Um, you always keep paint this side, right? Um, the other side uh, once paint dries to it, it has a tendency to potentially flake off if it's whipping around. So one trick about masking is keeping this, this stuff pretty taunt. Um, if you've got areas in, in the, once it's all done, that is, is loose, you know, squeeze it together and tape it off. Just make sure it can't flap around when you're, uh, when your gun's shooting at it. So we'll go ahead and shoot a little more video, you know. I've, this is kind of what I've done here. This is all back masked, right? There's, there's, there's masking on the inside, then I laid it in there and trimmed it. Same thing with the windows. 
uh, sections, you know, that's all back mask because I want this jam to get be nice and painted, you know, and, and uh, obviously this is just for the prime coat, but um, I'll use the same concept when I go to paint the car. This is this is just to keep the dust and the overspray of the primer out of the car um, on this first step. Okay, going along, go ahead and back mask this wheel well. You know, when I, I underlined this, or um, when I undercoated the car for the most part, did all the, the different work here, it's really clean. Um, all these jams, everything is really clean, so obviously tape sticks pretty well to it. Um, now I just, I'm trying to limit the amount of overspray that gets in here from my next primer coats. So um, you just go across and take the tape. I like to take it in small chunks, and I'm just taking it across the back edges. Um, this is pressure sensitive tape. This tape isn't anything special. Um, this is just a Scotch brand, brand green tape. The yellow tape from the automotive stores is pretty good as well. You definitely don't want to cheap out on tape. Um, I know, you know, tape isn't cheap. You use a lot of it, but in the grand scheme, if you're going to actually build a car like this, it doesn't matter. You know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pennies on the dollar and, and cheap tape will fail on you. It won't stick properly. Um, you know, pressure sensitive type masking tape like this that uh, most automotive places use is, uh, is a big deal. It, it really helps out in making sure that you can get this done quickly without messing around too much and that it stays. Um, you know, it needs to stay fairly sticky at the same token it needs to release when it needs to release when you're ready for when you're done without ripping up um, a bunch of everything else. So um, I'll show you what I did here. So anyways, going around this wheel well with the tape. Just on the inside of this inner fender well. Good time too to kind of look at that inner fender well. If it needs a little adjustment, you know, the hammer and dolly can go through in there and, and tinker it up. Um, this one's pretty even. The other one had a little wow in it. Took a block and I was able to pound it just, just even. Um, just tidy them up. Now's the time to do that since you're in here and you're kind of looking at it and you're playing with it. Um, you know, before you go to primer, well, before you go to paint. So. Okay, so I think I've got plenty of tape in there now for that inner wheel. Well, now what I like to do is create a, a structure. You know, like I was saying earlier, I don't want that plastic to be whipping around when I'm spraying this. You know, that's more of a chance of stuff to be bouncing off. So um, I like to go through here and add a little bit of back masking for an infrastructure to that for that plastic to sit into. Um, you know, just a, just a couple pieces of tape up under the inside of this will give it a little bit more rigidity and keep it from flapping around so much. So again, I'm kind of just doing this all in reverse, you know, attaching this stuff from the inside. Well, that's not long enough to do anything. It's not, a, it's not an exact science since I just wasted a piece of tape here. I might as well use it for something. Um, you know, creating like a web, like a spider's web, this to uh, stick to. Um, you know, it's funny too because I have buddies who, or guys I know, who work for automotive shops, or and it's so funny because they all get on their case about, oh, you use too much tape, or use too much this, or plastic, or whatever. But I mean, you know, the nice thing about tape and plastic, especially like the right plastic, is dust clings to it. You know, dust is going to stick to the tape. Dust is going to stick to the proper uh, plastic. And that's all more things that'll help catch and keep that dust from getting into your paint. You know, it's so important to keep that out of your paint, especially when you don't have a, uh, you know, $100,000 uh, paint booth set up that does this every day. So anyways, there's the back masking there. Next thing, I'm going to wrap that plastic around. And same thing, same concept, you know, with, with these seams, it's back masked up under the ledge. Same with the body seams on the car. I'm going to back mask off of those and then bring plastic down to the floor and tape it off to the floor. You know, wipe my floor off nice and clean so the tape sticks. Just a little trick there and some back masking. Same concept works for just about anything, windows and uh, you name it. Okay, so got most of it masked off now to the floor. Yeah, um, I'm gonna take a quick walk around and see what I'm doing here. I've, uh, obviously the windows are masked off, but got everything pretty well, you know, masked off to the floor. Clean the floor. Everything's up and around the inside of those fender wells coming around inside of that body seam you can see in there. You know, this is the stuff that people don't really want you to look at. Now, this is all the initial body of the car, right? And whoever did this did sandblast this car. Um, it looks dirtier on camera than it is in real life, but I am gonna go ahead and sand all of that and clean it all up, 
get all of that just kind of clean. When looking at the top, you can see that whoever did it when they sandblasted it, they got it down to bare metal everywhere, and then they used some sort of primer over the top of it. It looks like a sprayable filler almost that I've seen before. Um, it, it stuck real well to the metal, so I'm really just blocking it down. You know, most of the bodywork looks pretty well done. I'm just going to block it down, and I'm going to shoot another primer coat over the top of it. Um, but overall, the, the roof looks pretty, pretty dang good. You can obviously see in my blocking where there's some low and high spots, but that's okay. You know, that's typical. You shoot some more primer on that, and it'll get perfect. I can't feel any of that with my hand right now, um, unless I was gonna sand all of these low spots out. I could probably feel some of it, but I can't feel it right now. So that's what I'm gonna do. Block on this some more. Um, I know that this is slightly high still, so I'm gonna block it down again and then shoot primer. Just kind of looking at the body lines of the car right now. So anything that's that opaque color, like I said, that's how I bought the car. Someone had it sandblasted. Uh, I'm gonna go through and clean all the window jams out. You know, obviously I took in, uh, off the inner molding that was originally on the windows here. Looks pretty good and you can see the original color of the car there that, uh, I forgot what they call that, green. And then again, here's the, or, you know, that's, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna sand all these off, clean them off nice and clean, but it's a bear to get that gunk off of there. I still have some to wipe off there, he's in thinner. So I'm gonna clean that jam off really good. Use a, a little Rolock disc for that and just take time, get it cleaned up. But yeah, looking down the sides of the car, you know, a lot of this stuff, it's hard to see in the camera, you're probably not gonna see it, but a lot of cars you go to shows, you look down the side of them like this and there'll be a little wave in it. Uh, I'm not gonna say this car is gonna be perfect, but it looked pretty good. Um, you can see the body line right down the door and down there and just goes straight down. Now obviously it needs to be blocked a little bit differently. This, these are too crisp right now for this car, right? So I'll, I'm gonna you know round them slightly and, and make sure they're dialed dialed, but it's looking good. Same with the back, a couple things here. I noticed, you know, I'm blocking the car down. Normally there's a body seam here, comes down. Um, it looks like it was filled properly. I don't know if I'm gonna if I want it or not. So I don't have to make that decision right now. I'm just doing some blocking and gonna get a nice primer coat on this thing. You can see here where it was filled. And again, this is hard to see on camera, but it, it's really it's really nice. That transition looks really nice, actually. Um, this side is my nemesis right now. I'm still, I haven't messed with it lately, but you know, little things are gonna, you know, like that door line looks pretty nice with that, that seam up here. Even even the, the gap doesn't look bad. Until you get right, it's hard to see on the camera, but get the angle here. Boom, look at that. The arch in here on this side is greater than the arch on this side. Just this piece right through here to here. So I'm probably gonna end up welding and adding some metal to the inside of this and then shape it, just to make sure that's right on. Um, played with this fender, I got it a lot better than it was. It's hard to tell on camera again, but these are even, that's even, and then right here it pops up. I've got some filler on there, obviously I can take it down a little bit, and then this door needs to come in just slightly, you can't really, let me see if you can see it on camera here. There it is. And you can see the door in the rocker. So the door has to come in slightly, I'd say eighth of an inch or so. And then I can bring the fender in a little, and then this seam will come down, right? When I bring the fender in, this comes down. That'll come down. So that should help line it up. Um, and obviously this line, you can see where there's a little wow in it. I just have to, I just have to finish blocking it. This is a real rough, real thick, rough coat of primer on it. Most of these panels that I did do, I'd rather have a lot of material there to work with. You can block it down for days, get the, get the shapes all good to go. So yeah, the other side of the roof looking pretty good here. A little more blocking in here. This stuff's easy to clean up. You know, mainly I'm using my big blocks and, and blocking all that down. So yeah, we'll go through, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up those jams. Um, just thought I'd take a look at the masking. I did the same thing to the underside of the hood here. It's all been masked. I masked the underside of the hood and I masked the entire engine bay and I masked the entire car off to the floor through the front fenders here. Again, from the undersides of those seams. You know, that's when, when you're painting, I'm gonna be hitting those. I want paint on these seams 
because that's where the lower valence piece you know sits and I want painted seam to painted seam when these are bolted together um, there's actually a bumper bracket that come, comes through here but still uh, I want paint on there so yeah you can see the inside of the fender wells there and inside of where the see all of that underneath there on that rocker and everything it gets cleaned up and painted like I said I, I just want that all coated um, it won't be undercoating in those spots some guys will run that transition I think I've seen it on other cars where they'll run that the transition from the undercoating to painted surface and they'll run that line here on the edge of the rocker I wanted to run it on the body seam instead so this will all actually be same, painted the same color as the car um, you know this car isn't going to be rotated on mirrors or anything so as long as it's just nice and coated and sealed I'm happy um, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll do some time lapse. Maybe be shooting some primer on this sucker next after I uh, clean up the rest of those seams, wipe her down. Like I said in the previous uh, video there, when I was doing 2K primer prep, same process. Just uh, now we're gonna do it on a bigger platform here and get all that opaque stuff sanded and then nice coats of primer on it, so I can start to really spend days and days blocking. <laughs> on to the next step. Okay, I went ahead and shot some primer on the main body of the car. Uh, it turned out pretty good. Got a couple good coats on it, at least for now. I don't think I'll have to shoot more than this, but we'll see. Um, it's kind of nice when you shoot primer, you can start really getting an idea what the car is going to look like uh, when it goes to paint. Obviously, I'm going to let this dry. I'm actually going to probably let this dry for at least a day or two before I go to start blocking on it. I'm not in a rush. You know, the weather's not super warm. The shop will be about, on average, probably. 55 to 60 degrees. I'm not going to keep the heat up real high. It's 70 in here right now while I'm shooting, but I'm going to let that just all flash off. Um, you know, really at the end of the day, until I start blocking, I'm not going to see the major issues, but I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out. So just kind of do another update. Um, I'll probably do, wait another couple weeks and we'll do an update on it. I'm probably going to end up shooting some, I'm hoping to shoot some paint on this car actually in the next few weeks. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, there was a lot of information there. Some of it's choppy, some of it's changed. It's been a while since I've shot a lot of that video. I did want to get an update out there. Some of my ideas have changed in the way I'm masking the car is changing. Um, I had a buddy with a 20 year vet, 30 years veteran, tons of schooling came over here and he said the body work on this car is phenomenal, uh, which was really, I was really proud of, I'm glad about because I've got, you know, 600 hours, I don't even know, 400 plus hours into body work on this car so far. Um, it's fun for me. Um, I'll probably try and do another video of just talking about my experience painting the car for the first time by myself actually doing every component of work to it. I've been doing automotive stuff for so long and I've never ever taken it to this level. 
and there is a very clear reason why people charge twenty, thirty thousand dollars for a paint job, and I can go into more, a lot more detail on that. So, if you do, if you've watched the video this long, uh, and you want to, you want to, if you're interested in that, let me know. I might do it um, just for the heck of it, and uh, probably be a 10, 15 minute rant on just that. So. Anyways, I have no paint on this car. I'm masking it has changed. I will get another update on me painting this car. Uh, the, there are a few changes that the guy had me make and it really has to do with the prep, um, meaning the masking. I had to take all the masking off and redo it. And I'm also gonna take this down to 400. I'm gonna do a, a, a sand down to 400. There's a lot of information online about the different grits. Right now my sealer's telling me 400, so I'm gonna stick with that and actually go down to 400 on it. Um, that in combination with one dent, one area that the guy found that I missed, um, can't see it, uh, but you can feel it. And it was enough of a, of a one of those wows that it takes the car to a whole nother level. This car is already at that level where it's, you can look down the side of it and you can't see anything, uh, which is amazing, except for one area on the other fender. <laughs> so I'm gonna fix that as well, remask the car, sand it down to 400, then we'll actually shoot some paint. So anyways, hope you liked the video. Hey, uh, if you liked these at all, want to keep seeing them, uh, hit like and subscribe. Thanks again.